Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 13. Let brotherly love continue. Plain and simple. Love your brethren. Continue to love your brethren. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Now, Again, who's the Bible, who is this book written to? Hebrews. Now, according to the Hebrews in the Old Testament that we, we as a read, to, read as a family today, who are the strangers? The Gentiles. And Gentiles are dead dogs. And brethren would be strangers, would be those who are lost. But the world today, the church today, has changed and entertained to you know, pleasure and good times. No, you sit, you have conversation with them, you eat your peanut butter jelly sandwich at work with them, and you talk of Jesus when you get the opportunity. Praise God and thank God for your meal. You don't go to movies with them, you know. For thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Now that's a remarkable statement. And according to this statement right here, we may in our lives have dealt with people whether strangers we they're not saved or people who are proclaimed to be saved and some of those people in our lifetime may have been actually angels and they're not going to have wings they're not going to float down if you read the old testament as the Hebrews have, and when you mention this verse here, they would go back and say, hey, Abraham was visited by angels. Jacob was visited by angels. And do you believe, or do I believe angels today? Yes, I do. Do you believe that you can entertain angels? I call the wonder sometimes. I don't know. To be careful. What thereby some have entertained angels unawares. You don't know if you did or not. You gotta be careful. Remember them that are in bonds, put in jail, handcuffs, as bond with them, and them which suffer adversity. Any Jew that gets saved, man, he is ostracized from Hebrews from Jewish, from his family, from his job. How dare you believe that Jesus? And notice it's mentioning other Hebrews who have been jailed and locked up. And you find that in the book of Acts. As be, being yourselves also in the body, chapter 13, we are now talking to Christians. The body of Jesus Christ. And as the body of Jesus Christ, you may come across angels. <laughs> marriage is honorable and all. There is nothing about marriage that God does not honor between a husband and a wife. Between a husband and a wife and a wife, he don't honor. The marriage of two men or the marriage of two women is not honorable. I don't care what the state says. You can take the state and go to hell with it. Because the Bible, from Genesis to Hebrews, marriage is one man and one woman. 
and the bed undefiled. What a husband and wife does in their bed, behind their bedroom door, if they got a door, maybe a bed, whatever. Whatever they do in that bed, it's honorable to God, husband and wife. He said, well, he does this. Marriage bed is undefiled. He wants to do this. Marriage bed is undefiled in the eyes of God. Now, but whoredoms, whoremongers, and adulterers, God will judge. And again, he's talking to, forgive me, I got allergies. He's talking to Christians. And if you commit adultery and if you get involved with whoremongers, God's going to judge you. And for Christians to be at the judgment seat of Christ and you'll suffer loss, you won't lose your soul. I advise you not to. To do these sins. Find a woman. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7, Paul says it's not good you touch a woman. If you want to touch a woman, you marry her. And when you marry her, you can do all you want. And the thing is, he read in that chapter to us that all right, if for one time part of your fasting, you want to have that marriage bed fast, make a particular prayer, and God, and God, Paul says, don't make it too long because Satan will come in. Excuse me, I have the allergies today. Let your conversation, that's your activity, that's your, your doing, your walk. It's not talking. Your action. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Oh, I want, I want, I want. I like that. I would like to have that. Oh, I got to have that. Just do it. And be content with such things as you have. It's hard with advertisements. For he has said, God, Jesus Christ has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That is written in Hebrews. You thought that'd be written in the Gospels. To brotherly love, to brethren, to the body, verse 3, the church. So even in Hebrews, final chapter, final writing that this writer writes to now the Christian. Because I already wrote about that those that sin willingly after they can't get it back, blah, 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 blah. Well, how come they didn't run to chapter 13 and say, I'll never leave thee for safety. Well, isn't that a contradiction of what we read earlier? Absolutely not, because those people are lost and going to hell and would not believe God. I have believed on Jesus Christ. These Jews have believed on Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, I'll never leave thee for safety. And let's see. Uh, by the way, it's found in Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. How's that? The Old Testament. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Psalm 118, verse 6. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. And if you want to see that in practice in history, Fox's Book of Martyrs. It is amazing what some of those Christians did to the Holy Spirit. Some of them went to that, to the burning stake singing praises. <laughs> Some quoted scripture. They feared God and not man. <laughs> Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. So these would be pastors and ministers, evangelists, missionaries, whose faith follow, follow them. Consider the end of their conversation, their life, their walk. And so reality, what we're learning, pastor, evangelist, missionary, you better watch your conduct and we better watch our conduct. People are following us. People are looking to us for examples. And if you've got a worldly con conversation, you're going to have a worldly group of people following you. And you're going to be sorry at the judgment. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. That is used by the charismatics that we can heal, we can do. It has nothing to do with the healing ministry. All right, Jesus is the same yesterday. Well, let's look in the past. Is he still nailed to the cross? Then he can't be the same as yesterday. When this was written, about 64 A.D., 
Jesus Christ had already died, was already buried, and rose from the dead, according to the scriptures. So you can't say he's the same as yesterday. Because the previous time of this writing, he was on a cross. Previous to that, he was in the wound of Mary. What is Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever as written right now, and what I could take from this today? He's eternal. He's alive. He was alive at the beginning of the world, so yeah. that was yesterday. Yeah. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father right now as, as this is writing. He's not on a cross. Go into some churches. Look at some necklaces. Look at some people's cars that hang in from the rearview mirror. They put yesterday as he's still on that cross. That's impossible. Today he is not dead. And if you go across saying this verse, well, we can have the healing. Paul lost the healing. What about people that we read that he left sick and were sick? Even himself died. How come he couldn't resurrect himself? So don't take this verse out of context. Take this verse as the living proof of Jesus Christ. He's not dead. He is with the Father, the right hand. Be not carried about with diverse, different kinds, several, and strange doctrines. Hocus pocus, this is Jesus' body and blood. Go out and proclaim that we're going to bring the kingdom in. No. And listen, if it was going on with the disciples, the apostles, and Paul warned us that in the church age, deceitfulness and and these doctors are going to come in. They're in. They're in the churches. They're all around us. And we are told as Christians, do not be, don't carry it. Don't burden yourself with it. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. That heart, the man with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Be established with grace, not with meats. Uh-oh. Someone again, they're trying to put that dietary out there as the, um, the Church of Christ. As the, uh, Scientology, no, yeah, not Scientology, the other one there. You're supposed to, no, you can't eat red meat, you can't eat pork and all that. No, no, don't worry yourself about that. Which have no, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. They got these doctors, they got these beliefs, they got the Old Testament. Get away from them, don't carry it. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. That's kind of interesting. This is the Christian separation of worship. Those people that got those strange doctrines and diverse doctrines, and you can't eat this, and you can eat that, but you can't do this, they have no right at the tabernacle, at the altar we have. As Christ we have an altar as Christians. For the bodies of those beasts, animals, whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin, are burned without the camp. Okay, now we're looking at... Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're looking back to the Old Testament again. They would bring the animals and offer them on the altar. They would burn them there. Now we're going to take something else that's in the Old Testament and we're going to bring it to Jesus Christ. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, his blood, we already seen in Hebrews, is better than the blood of bulls and goats. We established that fact. Suffered without the gate. Okay, verse 11 and 12. The Old Testament said that you were to bring that blood to the brazen altar. You come to the tabernacle, you go through that first veil. That's the veil that's outside. There would be the brazen altar, which pictures hell. They would tie the animal to the horns and you would lay your hand on the on that animal and you would break his neck you would kill that animal there 
They would take the shoulder, the good part, the blood, and they would put it on the fire. Now, the bad parts in the animal, the guts, the doo-doo, or dung, that which was unclean of that animal, was carried outside the camp and burned. Now, it's remarkable because I don't know and I don't really care because that's not the holy city today. But, according to the scripture, if you were to go to the holy city today and they were to show you Calvary, and if Calvary is in Jerusalem, they violated chapter 13, verse 12, because it says he suffered without the gate. When they crucified Jesus at Calvary, they brought him outside Jerusalem. He's on the outskirts of Jerusalem. He did not die in Jerusalem. He was treated as the uncleanness of the animals. Doo doo. The guts. That what was refused on the altar. Christ went. Listen, when Christ took our sins, he took it all. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp. Get out. You know, isn't that one right there? Isn't that wouldn't that be telling you enough? Don't go into Jerusalem. Go join Jesus Christ where he was outside the camp. Bring Jesus Christ outside the camp. Bring a lost sinner outside of Jerusalem, outside the temple. Bring him to Calvary, which is not in the city gates, and deal with his soul there. And there was no blood of bulls and goats in where Jesus died. That was on the other side of the wall. Which here, six years later, is going to be destroyed. So while they're killing the sacrifices in Jesus' time, and he's dying on that cross, it's like taking the refuse of the animals that are being sacrificed. That's what Jesus was. He's outside the gate. Bearing his reproach. For here, Calvary, have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come, and look at chapter 12, verse 22. But we are come unto Mount Zion, heavenly Zion, unto a city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, into an innumerable company of angels. We're not looking for Jerusalem. Foolish Christians look for holy Jerusalem. No. I'm looking for new Jerusalem. The city that will come out from God with the new heavens and the new earth so go to go to the holy city and violate the scriptures we're supposed to be looking for the blessed hope and new Jerusalem that's our mother that's our city that's what it says for we have no continuous city but we seek one to come it's not here yet. It's what the Bible says. If you're reading it with me on the King James Bible, I hope. But him, Jesus, therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Don't go to Jerusalem. Go preach the gospel. God approves of that. God enjoys you lift because if you're going to preach the gospel, you're going to mention Jesus. And how many times on Saturdays when I preach the gospel? How many times do I mention Jesus? And every time I do that, God says, they're talking about you, son. I am well pleased. Or 
Obey then them have rule over you. Parents, priests, lawyers, uh, police, pastors, president, the king. And smit yourselves for they watch for your souls. Romans chapter 13. As they must give an account. They will stand before God, saved or lost, of what they did. You know, you want to be a mayor? Okay. You will give an account for everybody in that city. You want to be a pastor? You'll be an account for everybody in that congregation. And probably that's that area that you're in. The Bible says go house to house. When did you do that? You want to be a president? You're going to be in charge of all the 50 states. You want to be a governor? You're going to be in charge of all the counties and countries. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> you want to run for office? You're going to be held accountable. That they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. If you don't obey the people in authority, you cause them grief. And you will answer to God for giving them a hard time. You're supposed to help the leader. You're supposed to pray to those, eater, uh, those uh, leaders. So I'm trying to think which Timothy is. I think it's Timothy, 1 Timothy 2. I don't care who that person is. You're supposed to pray for them. That God can work in them and they can do what God wants of them for the people. You give them a hard time, pray for us. Well, that's simple. So you pray for them in authority, 17, you pray for us. For we trust we have a good conscience. That's what we ought to have. In all things, willing to live honestly. That is supposed to be the life of a Christian. We're supposed to pray for others. We're supposed to have a good conscience. And we're supposed to live honestly. But I beseech you the rather to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. I want to see you guys. I want to be with you. He's absent from them. This letter is being sent off from another location. Now the God of all peace, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, John chapter 10, the sheep are Jewish. Other sheep I have are the Gentiles. Sheep. What's the title of the book? Hebrews. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant, the New Testament, that began when Jesus died. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. You want to do right? Oh, forgive me. Don't let your pastor lead you. Don't let your mother or father or your husband or wife lead you. They can guide you. Let Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, lead you. The shepherd's the one that leads. You go where your shepherd leads you. Don't stray away. Working in you... That which is well pleasing in his sight. Some people do things to please the pastor. That may not please Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. In whom, uh, to, me, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We're supposed to do things that gives God the glory. And Jesus Christ, not man. When you set out to please man and do for man, that is not for Jesus Christ unless it's the man, Christ Jesus. And I beseech you, brethren, save Hebrews. Suffer the word of exhortation, for I have written a letter unto you in few words. This is a few words. Know ye that our brother Timothy, there you go, is set at liberty. They know about Timothy. 
Now, I'm not going to say Paul wrote this because we don't know who wrote it. But they know Timothy. He was a half Jew. With whom, if he come shortly, I will see you. So, if Timothy shows up, he's going to show up. Slew uh, all them that have the rule over you again. That seems to be the theme of chapter 13. And all the saints saved believers. If there's one thing I can get about the book of Hebrews for saved people in the church, it's chapter 13. They of Italy salute you. The writer of Hebrews is in Italy. Or he knows the church that's in Italy. And they converse with the writer of Hebrews. Grace be with you all. Amen. And we conclude a very hard book.